Dr. Sunny from Dre Composite, welcome to the Protrusive Dental Podcast. How are you, my friend? Yeah, really well. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you for having me. How are you? It's good to finally have you on, man. We're talking about a really big topic. I mean, all the topics we cover nowadays, I just think they're so fundamental. And we're talking about like, you know, circumferential matrix bands, like the bread and butter that we were taught at dental school. Like maybe now they're teaching sectionals at dental schools, but certainly when I was training, all we used, right, was a sickland. And then we had one that was like a disposable matrix band with like mylar, clear material, in, like a clear mylar inside that circumferential band. And so we did everything in, in Sheffield at that point, And I didn't even get to to grips with Toffelmeyer at that point. It was just Sickland for everything. If it didn't work, it didn't matter. You know, that's all we had. So before we dive into the different kinds of matrices, why there is still a place for circumferential bands and which uh, what are the pros and cons of each one. So I've seen some of your material. I'm really excited to bring it out to everyone. So just tell us about yourself, your working week, and the, the courses that you teach and how you got involved uh, with composite education. Uh, so in a nutshell, I actually I've taken a little bit of a back seat when it comes to clinical now. So I'm mainly doing about two sessions a week. Kind of found my happy, happy frequency of being in the clinic it enables me to do my best work. Right? And interestingly, you know, much of my work is on a referral basis now from other dentists doing restorative stuff. So really enjoy it. You know, when I'm in there, I'm really fresh and can really quite hit it. And the rest of the time is spent, you know, visiting practices and speaking to dentists a lot like yourself. Very good. And in terms of your, your journey into getting it, because it's quite unique. I mean, you, you touched on it, but well, guys, what Sunny has is that dentists will refer Sunny cases with like deep subgingival margins, large, awkward cavities that patients want restorations for, direct restorations. And Sunny has created this niche in his local area that, you know what, if you've got a tough, big restoration, I'm your guy. And so how did you build that, that reputation? And, and then how, you know, why do you enjoy that so much? Well, I mean, um, I suppose it was a natural organic thing, right? You know, and I'm not going to spoil today's uh, showing, but I did have a, a secret weapon, so to speak, you know, that I've been using for about four years now. I didn't share it with anyone because, like I said, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a weapon. But it doesn't make sense, you know, if um, only one man's using it, but it's not that much of an impact to the world. So, yeah, I suppose the reputation kind of spread in, in a sense. People would, would send me problems. And then when you're solving problems that other people have said, you need to remove these teeth, you know, patients pick up it's a bit of a buzz from patients it's a bit of a buzz from the dentist and then just kind of worked out really and it's pretty fulfilling to kind of help people solve problems like i said that, that, that just otherwise would be uh, uh, these teeth would otherwise, would otherwise be extracted so we're talking about large awkward uh, cavities restored with direct composite uh, and what i say to patients whenever we're doing this kind of work uh, is where i say to patients we are reconstructing your tooth because what i hate and i'm sure you agree uh, sunny is when dentists uh, put on the estimate or, or say we're going to do a filling listen a filling is what you put in a sandwich right what we do with these deep messy subgingival restorations when we're laboring over choosing the right wedge the white right matrix the correct bonding protocol and you call it a filling i mean it is a reconstruction or what do you think about that no, i totally agree wholeheartedly in fact you know on my estimate it says composite restoration and uh, the amount of time and effort and diligence that you you know you have to spend a lot of effort to get this right you know if you're going to do it you're going to have to do it right it takes time so actually i advocate you know for charging the same as a conventional crown you know just minus the labial right so you know you frame that to the patient as a same day tooth you know they understand that there's no impression scan required they're not having to wait in time and they can leave with that tooth. Which is why, Sunny, I, I, I like the term reconstruction. I just, it, you know, even more, I've actually moved away. It was from filling beginning because I didn't know what I was doing. And then it was like, you know what? I'm more than a filling. I'm a restoration. And then I realized that I labor over it so much that, you know, now it's a reconstruction. Oh. So if anyone wants to steal that, go ahead. Uh, you heard it here first. So we're doing constant reconstructions. So, so tell me, Sunny, listen, what, what what's up in the world of restoratives where there was around about an uprise, around about 10 years ago, where everyone was moving away from circumferentials and it was like if you're not using a uh, sectional then you are a bad dentist or you are not doing a good job uh, or you are taking too many shortcuts or whatever so everyone kind of moved to, to sectionals and I've got a, you know, a drawer full of different varieties of sectionals but for me where I find circumferentials still very much useful is in two scenarios and two extremes. One scenario is when the cavity margins, let's say you're doing a lower molar uh, mesial restoration, right? Uh, and the distance between that cavity margin and the premolar is not very much. So by putting a curved sectional, you're actually going to indent or dent the sectional. It's going to bump in and you're going to make it like a negative, uh, like a concavity in the restoration. So that's not suitable. So unless you want to drill into the tooth, there's no point. So at that point, like a straight sick villain or something is great. It's easy. It's something we're used to. You don't have to labor over it. So that, that's why I found it brilliant. But then over the years, I found uh, the, the greater curve system, which we're going to talk about, 
Uh, and this is brilliant for these, those really large ones that perhaps uh, in some other cases I might do a crown, but for a reason we're doing a large reconstruction, there that word again. Uh, and I found this system to really help me to get the contacts and stuff. So uh, that's kind of the direction we're going in. But you tell me, my friend, you know, you've been in this space for a little bit longer than me. Where do you see the place for circumferential bands? Is there still a place? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm supremely biased, but yeah, I certainly think there is. And, I, and I'll probably preface that by saying, you know, it's very interesting that you raise that, that. Actually, I think circumferentials are really useful when there's a wide interproximal space, you know, so the distance between the base of the cavity and the adjacent marginal ridge is quite wide. I think they can help us there and sectionals can sometimes struggle. But interestingly, you've just mentioned when that's really small too. But suddenly it depends on which scenario, because if you're talking about a really wide one, can you imagine just putting a normal sickvalin in or a normal tophamire in? You can be left with a massive open open contact. Sure, sure, sure. Right? Which is which is why I specifically refer to uh, the greater curve when I mentioned that. But yeah, you are coming to the point of a very narrow space and, and less space. That's why I think that they're, they're brilliant. Yeah, sure. 100%, 100%. Again, I mean, uh, not all circumferentials are made equal, right? As we're going to as we're going to see from tonight, right? But um, yeah, typically that's where, where I would use a type of circumferential to help me bridge that gap. And, um, you know, when there's missing cusps or stuff like that. So I like to preface it by saying, you know, what sectionals are really useful for, which is when you've got a class two that's really conservative, you know, and it, it hasn't got a wide space, you know, it's not very subgingival. Sectionals work really quite well, right, as we all know. But, you know, when class twos are more complex, which which they are, and they're often not finishing on enamel and they're more on dentino and, and they're subgingival and the caries are undermining the cusp. Then, then sometimes sectionals can't really help with that. And then even more complex is when we have one or more cusps missing. And again, that's why I think circumferential matrices can really help us. And then just moving on to, to the next class of class three and four, you know, they can typically be restored with like a rubber dam, a sectional on its side with a wedge, or even using like a custom solution, like a very strip. The issue, however, is when they are subgingival also, right? And funny enough, I use a circumferential to restore those predictably, but I'm not gonna spoil it yet. And then finally, class five, Typically, mm -hmm. we're taught to use, you know, brinker clamps with rubber dam or retraction cord and PTFE. But that's tricky, too, because when you've got a really subgingival class five and the clamp can't grab on and now you can't use a clamp and rubber dam, that becomes problematic. And then in instances where you have thin, friable gingiva and you think packing retraction cord and PTFE is a good idea, especially when you're restoring that, you know, that lesion for sensitivity and you restore it only for that patient to come back a month later with some worse recession and it's still sensitive. And then, you know, the fingers pointed at you. Right. So, again, Funny enough, I use a sectional to restore that situation without agitating the gum and we'll... You use a circumferential, you uh, Sorry, a circumferential. Oh, that's a, what a big... What a boy, Freudian, Freudian slip, that one. Uh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm so sharp, I'm so yeah, sharp. Yeah, you are. So, yeah, use <laughs> no, no, but you know what? You raise a good point there. Uh, PT, PT, I, my go-to is PTFE for class fives, mm -hmm. right? For gives the best um, um, isolation. But in the correct biotype, a thick biotype. You're totally right there. When you've got thin biotype, like today, I had I actually did one today, did a couple today on, on this lady, like super, super thin gums. Like if there was an extra thin biotype, that would be her. And so I actually tried going for the triple zero retraction cord for just a moment, just delicately. And end up, because I was running short time, I just uh, did it uh, sort of uh, freehand, right? No, no matrix and just keep it as dry as possible, cotton rolls. But your way of using matrices and allowing the metal to tuck and create that seal by the gingiva, I do like that for class five as well. So I just want to point that out. So, so let's go to the next thing then. Let's talk about what are the common, widely available circumferential. So circumferential for those students listening is a matrix band that is a circle. It goes all the way around the tooth. So what are the different types available? Like a quick overview, like, you know, Sikvalin, Toffelmeyer, the, the main players in the game. Uh, and what are the pros and cons of each? I think that that, you know, that kind of stuff is really missing, the fundamental stuff. I'd love to hear it from your perspective. Cool, lovely. Uh, am I good to share my screen then? Yeah, please, please go ahead, share your screen. Okay, so the, for those of you listening right now, um, you have to see this uh, in the visual later in the video, uh, this awesome poster. It says Battle of the Bands, and it's got Matrix written in red there. I love this uh, graphic. This is so cool. Cool. So, um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I do, I do like a good graphic, a good visual. So, yeah, there are, there are quite a few options when it comes to circumferential matrices, and I'm quite the experimental, right? So let's run through them. So what I've got lined up for tonight's... Just just talk left to right for the audio listeners, left to right. So so Sonny's basically done a bit of experiment because I asked him to, he was like, listen, I want to talk about circumferential matrix bands. Here are the different systems I know. So just talk left to right, the different bands we're going to look at today. So from left to right in order, we have uh, the Squeveland Retainer with a straight band. Then we have the Pro Matrix Regular, which is a pre-assembled straight band matrix with a plastic arm, similar to Omni Matrix. And then we have the Pro Matrix Curve, mm -hmm. which is the same as above, but has a, a cervical and coronal contour. And then we have the regular Tuffmeyer retainer with a DME band, a deep margin elevation band. 
Then we have the Paladin 360, which is a retainerless circumferential matrix with a small tightening knob. It's similar to auto matrix. See, that's the one that Instagram dentists are using. That, that's the one that I, th I see the Instagram dentists are favoring quite a bit, the Paladin 360. Uh, have you noticed a trend that perhaps a lot of dentists are using that one uh, in terms of what you've seen? Yeah, interestingly, I have, I have a few friends that uh, are using it at the minute, but you know, again, pros and cons, right? So some of them are using it and liking it and some of them are using mm -hmm. it and, and have disbanded it now. Actually, Sonny, you know what? A lot of dentists will think it will do, you will use that circumferential band, but for that case, they won't take a photo and they won't post it on social media because it's not cool. That's, that's, it's not cool to use circumferential in this world of sectionals sure, right? sure, sure. but we're making it cool again you know so uh we'll, we'll be showing that <laughs> that's right that's right so that Paladin 360 i mean this this circumferential ring with without a retainer arm it's similar to auto matrix but the auto matrix was like that but it had a, a specific tool to actually tighten the matrix in the mouth as well right so a broad category i'm saying and then we've got uh not strictly mm -hmm. a band but we'll be looking at garrison berry strips which are mylar strips again with a coronal and cervical contour so a much better mylar and then finally we've got the wild card entry new to the UK market, which may surprise many people. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just to note, when we do this kind of uh, analysis, that the prices that I've included, they're just a guide, right? And they'll vary from dealer to dealer. And they do not include VAT. So you'll, you'll need to apply the relevant taxes in your particular jurisdiction. But for comparison purposes, I think the numbers included should be helpful. So, so I mean, the reason why this is important to mention, guys, is that what I appreciate and what I, what I told Sonny is like, OK, so what if this matrix is slightly inferior? But what if it's like significantly cheaper? Right. So th that makes sense. Right. And so what Sunny's done really, really good is, OK, we're looking at the circumferential matrices in all their dimensions, like their contact, how thick they are, uh, ease of use, but also how much it costs you. Right. So that's a, quite a, a thorough analysis. Indeed, indeed. And it, it's important. Right. We're in, we're in a yes, we look after people, but we're also in business. Right. So we have uh, it, just for the audio listeners as well. We have basically prepared two two cavities, a very simple DO and a much more extensive MOD where the carries start to undermine the cusps as well. So we could actually pit them against two situations. It's never always going to be just that textbook example, right? So we want to start with the sick villain and the straight band, right? So a quick primer on them. Mm -hmm. Squeevelins are, you know, it's, it's so funny in my, where I learned, they call them squeevelins. I don't know if that's just a slang type thing, but. Yes, that's what I learned as well. Is that what you learned? That's fine then. I just, uh, you were saying sick villains for a while. Which is a bit of a tongue twister. But then I was corrected by someone, and I, and I, and I didn't know. I, I thought it was Squeveland, but then someone says, it's Sickland, oh, right. and therefore I, I just stuck with it. <laughs> well, I'm going to run with Squeveland's, right, because it just rolls so much nicer. So, yeah, a primer, right? So uh, Squeveland's are reusable, autoclavable retainers, and they're used generally with straight matrix bands. It does need setting up each time before use. It is widely taught with the use of wedges, and I've found them to be able to restore simple class two, simple MODs, core buildups, and when you're treating a tooth surface with no neighboring tooth, and I'd say the, you know, very easy subgingival restorations it could probably do too, but, but we'll carry on. Um, Price-wise... Mm -hmm. But but Sunny, I'm just going to just say for any students watching this, because I think this will be a popular one with students when they're, you know, on the clinics learning all these uh, things, class two, their first couple of class twos, and maybe what they've learned so far is these uh, you know, squeevelins. And uh, maybe the sectionals at this point for a student are a little bit fiddly, a little bit too fiddly, a little bit a bridge too far maybe. So with these, the wedge, the purpose of the wedge is, you know, it pushes your gingiva out of the way. It compresses the matrix band up again against the cavity so you get that apical seal and it also separates the teeth so that when you take the matrix off the thickness of the metal band is hopefully accounted for accounted for by the separation you get from the wooden wedge and therefore you're likely to have a contact but this reminds me one of the reasons one of the key things that I think 10 years ago why people are moving away from circumferential bands at the time especially uh, squeevelins and moving towards sectionals is because the, the, the key critique was that the contact point is A, a point, it's not a contact area, and B, it's too coronal. And the problem of being too coronal is that it's risk of fracturing and therefore food trapping happening, which I've seen. So those are the kind of considerations for using these very traditional matrix bands. Totally, totally agree. You nailed it on the head. And then obviously, are you going to talk about the complex MOD photo? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I was just going to touch on the pros and the cons, right, and then pertaining to these scenarios. Is that cool? Okay. So yeah. uh, price-wise, the squeezing retainers are roughly £10 each and a pack of 12 disposable matrix bands coming at 68 pence, which works out around five to six P per use. The cost of wooden wedges wow. is insignificant, so I'm not really gonna account for those in today's experiment, right? Um, the only addition to the mm. price per use would be if you use some specialist wedges. But from what I've seen, it, you know, if people are using squeevelins with straight bands, typically they're just gonna be using wooden wedges and not something specialist. Yep. So the uh, pros, you know, they're widely available and most dental assistants will know how to set it up. And for simple restorations, the matrix and wedge can help actually isolate our cavity preparations. So, you know, for a simple class two, mm -hmm. it can actually give us isolation of that prep. 
and it is rigid enough for very simple subgingival cavities. The cons are setting it up is tedious and it can be time consuming. We're not able to handle extensive subgingival cavities, nor wide interproximal spaces, or when the cavity is more complex. And what I've found is if the tooth is bulbous, it can actually slip off of the tooth and we can lose that cervical seal quite easily. And that can be quite frustrating. You're ready to place your restoration and it just slips mm. off. And for more complex restorations, uh, you know, MODs where the cusps are, are undermined or missing cusps, often we, we get open contacts because the band tends to collapse inwards. Mm -hmm. And I also think we have a bit of a... Yep, so th th that image there is wonderful, that visual where you put the wedge through uh, that lower right ear image. Yeah. And uh, that, 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 you know, I'm getting goosebumps here seeing that, you know, I'm, I'm getting sweaty, my palms getting sweaty just looking at that because <laughs> I've been in that scenario so many <laughs> times where I've said, I've taken an intro photo. I actually take an intro photo here and I say, can you see that I had to choose between your seal and, and it touching the next tooth? And I picked your seal. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah, Smith, totally. and Not so that. therefore, food will get go, go, get in there, but it will get right out. Don't worry, because it's a nice open, nice big open contact, nice big meaty open contact. <laughs> uh, the bus will go in, but the bus will come. I out. love it. I love it. I love it. it. Makes a bunch of sense, but that's actually really quite common, right? We're, we're often battling between getting a cervical seal and a contact area, right? But you know, it needn't be that way. Mm -hmm. I actually think using this is a bit of a, a risk for, uh, especially when we're using amalgam for overhangs, right? Because we need to pack amalgams quite tightly. And then, you know, because we're trying to do the best for the patient, we're packing, 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 often it can squeeze out cervically and we can get that overhang and not really realise. And we're only really going to realise if we're really diligent with our probing post or we take a, a post or bite wing, which isn't that common for amalgam, right? But I only say this because, like I said, I, mm -hmm. I, I see a lot of overhangs and that's what I typically fixing, you know, removing an overhang and restoring the tooth next door because of the damage it caused. And then I just had, finally, for mm -hmm. another disadvantage of using a, a straight arm retainer, a squeezing with a straight band, is that restoring a distal upper, upper second molar and third molars generally is quite difficult because of that straight arm and we just can't get the angulation. And then the final thing I'd add is that wedging can sometimes distort our matrix as well because we're really struggling to get it to seal the base of the cavity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good point. Now, if you're using this Squeebland matrix band and you find that when you put the wedge in, you've got a slight open contact. So not like a major open contact that like you see there, but you've got a slight open contact. What, a thing I was taught, which you know has worked wonders for me, I believe it's evidence-based as well, because this Swiss dentist was up on the podium, very much evidence-based, who was going through all the all the stuff, but it's by using a technique where you put squirt a little bit of flowable at the, the base. So where the matrix meets the, the cavity, and then you put your probe into the flowable, you then lean that probe against the adjacent tooth, okay? And then you flash cure it. I don't know if there's a name for this technique, Sonny, but you, you basically are holding, you're leaning that matrix over, you cure it, and then when you take your probe out, that flowable composite has, has now recreated your contact. It's stretched that, uh, it's like burnishing with composite almost, right? And then you're able to then continue the restoration, I end up getting really good results doing it that way. Uh, I, is that something that you tend to use or have used in the past? Yeah, typically, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll be revealing later why I don't typically need to do that too often, but but in the most extreme of cases, it is still a it's still a requirement. You know, when I've got something supremely subgingival, and then you can imagine the distance from the base of that cavity to the to the next tooth can be really exaggerated. That's when uh, that technique is really quite helpful. So yeah. Okay, brilliant. So sick Squeebland's done about seven pence a pop plus a ten pound retainer. But let's go with seven pence a pop. It's cheap and cheerful, but we can do better. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally, totally, totally. So now we're moving on to Pro Matrix, right? So pro matrix mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, a category of, of uh, straight band matrix bands, but they're pre-assembled and they come with a plastic arm and a knob to turn to tighten the band around the tooth. And it's similar to other brands like Omni Matrix, right? So, you, you know, it comes ready to set up, it's come ready set up for use. Uh, it's like the Squeezeland before, but, uh, and again, it's typically used with wedges. And I've been, I found them to work with, again, what we mentioned before, simple class two, simple MOD, core buildups. And when you're treating a tooth with no neighboring tooth, and very simple subgingival uh, restorations, you can, you can make it work. Price-wise, it's about, around £50 pounds for 50 of them, so roughly a pound per use. The only addition to the price, again, oh, wow. yeah, exactly. The only uh, addition to the, so quite the jump, right? Uh, so the only addition to the price will be, again, if you're using specialist wedges, but like a paladin wedge, which is roughly around 50p. But again, that varies person to person, but uh, wooden wedges are insignificant. So even if we were using a specialist wedge and you, you were using two, it'd range anywhere from one pound to two pound per use. So it gives us a kind of idea. I can't believe a power dent wedge is 50 pence, yeah, mate. indeed, indeed. They're good, though. I mean, they... Okay. they, they, they I learned something new for, for their... Um for their purpose, which I'll show you a case after with, with the Paladin wedges, they actually make all the difference in certain situations. So I actually think, think they're good. I just But I mean, a, a plastic wedge, I was always taught that a plastic wedge is is there to maybe create your seal, but it won't give you much separation. The separation comes from the ring, you sure. see? 
I agree with that as well. I agree with that as well. But again, when we show so, so you ain't need the ring when you do that. Yeah, yeah. Here. When we go into the uh, Paladin 360, where I didn't use a ring, you'll see actually where the actual Paladin wedges did everything with that very few major. But I'm spoiling that okay, one too. Cool. Right? So God, that, I'm looking forward to that. So that's a bit a bit later in this yeah, episode. Keep watching. Indeed. Okay. So yeah, please uh, tell us the rest. So uh, the pros, right? So again, it's ready to go. So no setup. So we, that saves time, right? And time is money, right? And for simpler restorations, the, again, once more, the matrix and wedge can help isolate our cavity preparations, right? The cons of this, very similar to before, not able to handle extensive subgingival cavities or wide interproximal spaces, or when the cavity is more complex. Again, same thing, I found if the uh, tooth was bulbous, it could actually slip off, which was quite frustrating. And for more complex restorations, open contacts are pretty common. Again, once more, it collapses inwards. And it's again, I think we still have the overhang risk with this, with amalgam particularly, you're going to pack, 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 and it can escape through the bottom, you know. So people who are watching, they'll be able to see the picture at the bottom right. There is a small amount of gap in it. If you're packing amalgam quite tightly, I think it can escape through there. Again, same deal, difficult restoring mm -hmm. upper second molars and third molars as well because of the straight arm. And I'd add an additional point to the mm -hmm. other, which is relevant for the environmentally minded people, but it's a plastic arm, right? And this whole plastic arm needs to be disposed of each time. Yeah, very valid. No, no. And it's good you mentioned that. Uh, and, and as you can see from the images, and I'll describe it is if you don't use a wedge, then maybe you don't have as good as a seal, but you might have a better contact. But you know, the seal is the deal. Mm -hmm. But then when as soon as you put the, the, the wedge in, then the seal still isn't 100%, but then you lose the contact. So a classic issue that you also have with the Squeveland, but a much higher cost and cost to the environment as well. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. So then we move on to the Pro Matrix curve, right? So it's same as the Pro Matrix straight, but it has a curved cervically anchor only more like the contour of a sectional. So a bit of a hybrid. It comes ready set up for use, right? And it, again, once more, it's typically used with wedges. And I found them to be able to restore simple class two, simple MRDs, core build ups, and you're treating a tooth for no uh, neighboring tooth, right? So same as the others. The price for this comes in at £56 for 50, so roughly a pound 10 per use. So you're basically paying 10% more for the contour. Again, the addition to the price will be if you're going to use specialist wedges. So if you were to use two, Again, the price range for per use would be £1.10 to £2.10 per use if you use specialist wedges, which from these images you'll see when you uh, and when you compare to the pallet dent wedges that we use later, you'll see that actually could have made all the difference and actually really made this work. So for some people, it would be worth it. It would actually be worth the cost, right? If they're going to get a good seal and not have to redo that restoration later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In terms of pros, it's ready to go, right? So it saves time once more. It's hybrid between a sectional and a circumferential, meaning the marginal ridges are easier to shape and simple class two cavity, the adaptation was really, really nice. I also found it less likely to slip off a bulbous tooth because it kind of wraps around the bulbosity compared to the Squeveland and Pro Matrix regular. Wedging was less likely to, to distort the matrix if placed beneath the cervical contour. Then I go on to say that the cons were not able to handle more extensive subgingival cavities, wide interproximal spaces, or when the cavity is more complex, the same as above. For more complex restorations, open contacts are common and the band tends to collapse once more. And in this scenario, I actually found it adapted worse than the regular Pro Matrix. And when I wedged it with a, yeah, yeah, I would agree with with a regular wedge, you know, it's, it's, so basically whenever the tooth isn't a perfect circle, these kind of situations, they kind of struggle, right? They kind of struggle. So even that wedge where that gap in was, it didn't really close it in totality. And again, a specialist wedge may, may have, but again, you are adding costs to what, sh what you'd expect to be mm -hmm. a better solution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, same deal, you know, there is that, mm -hmm. especially here where you see that example bottom right, where there is the gapping, the amalgam overhang risk certainly is there. Again, upper second molars and wisdoms are difficult because of the straight arm. And again, once more, the environmentally minded plastic arm needs to be disposed of each time. So very similar to, to above, but the main difference is being that the, the curve was a pro. You know, the contour was an advantage when it was a simple restoration, really nice adaptation, probably makes placement quite quick. But when it came to a more complex restoration, it becomes uh, a little bit, it seems to work against it. Yeah, because of the curve, it also acts against you in creating an even larger open contact. And that's, that's clear to see. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So then we move on to uh, a regular Tofmar retainer and a DME band, right? And just a quick primer on Tofmars. I mean, they're, they're similar to Squeedlands, but I find them much easier to use and they can be used with a wide range of bands, right? Tofmire, if we were going to use them with a straight band, would produce similar results to the straight band solutions we've just uh, gone through. So we're not going to do that. And we've opted for, uh, well, I've opted for a DME band as they're quite useful for more difficult subgingival situations. And they're just a very useful tool. And DME seems to be quite the trend at the moment as well of raising your margin mm -hmm. in order to place either a direct restoration or an indirect restoration. But it seems to be very, very trendy at the moment, right? People are moving away from subgingival mm -hmm. crown margins, right? It does need setting mm -hmm. up, but again, it's easier than the Squeveland. The top of my retainer has uh, two working parts, one to tighten the band and the other to tighten it around the tooth. Uh, in terms of price, 
The generic Tofma retainers are similar to the Squeedlands and come in around £10 each. And the DME brands, the lowest I saw them priced, it was roughly around £15 for 12, something like that. So it's about £1.15, something like that per use. But again, mm-hmm. you're going to need, if you're doing a direct restoration, you're going to need another matrix like a sectional to continue your build up, as well as one or more wedges. So sectional price is very... And just to, just to make that clear, Sonny, for anyone listening who hasn't used this band before, it's a DME, you know, deep margin elevation. So the purpose of this one is to get as subgingival as possible to allow you to create a seal there to lift it up and then you can use your traditional matrices or whatever to then do the rest of the restoration. That's why Sonny's saying that, you know, you've got to factor in the fee for a second matrix. Yeah, exactly. Spot on, spot on. So again, that, you know, that sectional prices can vary, right? From 50p to pound fifty each. But once more, wooden wedges are not really a cost that we need to worry about. But again, specialist wedges in use can if you needed to use it for whatever reason means that you know the price range per use could range anywhere from one pound 15 to three pound 65 right mm-hmm. the pros are that it can seal even more complex cavities even when they're really subgingival and often without the need for a wedge which is really quite interesting due to its design it allows us to elevate subgingival margins to finish indirect restorations on well bonded composite as opposed to you know risking a subgingival crown margin and, and if there's a, a small lip there that can cause us problems later and uh, finally, I'd say that it's unlikely to produce overhangs using the setup. You know, it's quite tight around the base and you can pack quite hard, you know, quite tightly there. And I, I doubt it's going to produce an overhang. The cons are that mm-hmm. a DME band is for a specific application. So it's not very versatile in that regard. And for direct restorations, it's only one step in the procedure and it requires additional setup and cost mm-hmm. thereafter. Again, once more, you know, for second molders and third molders, that can be quite difficult, again, because of the straight arm design of the retainer. And I found the traditional design Toffmeyer's can be tricky with these bands. If you over tighten, you can actually tear the band. So that's a bit of a stumbling block sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then you have to take it all off and then restart. You know, that's a, I never enjoyed uh, any interruptions to my workflow. You know, so I'm all about efficiency wherever I can. And I also found with mm-hmm. uh, Toffmeyer retainers, like the low price ones, that, you know, over time they got stiff. You know, I don't know if it's because of the autoclave or what, but they became stiff. They became unusable and I had to keep replacing them semi-regularly. So that was a bit of a, a con for me in, in this setup. Okay, fair enough. So now we're moving on to something a little bit more custom, a much more custom solution, right? I suppose a much more like a, a mm-hmm. designer matrix, so to speak. So the Paladin 360. Mm-hmm. So it's similar to... I've actually never used this, but people do say it's, uh, regard this highly. Well, it's interesting. And I'll, I'll explain why I thought it was really quite interesting. Uh, so, so again, it's similar to the auto matrix, which was these spherical matrices that had a separate handle that you would seat the matrix and then you'd use the handle to tighten it. So basically a removable retainer arm, so to speak. And this, in this instance, it's a preformed circular matrix with a tightening knob on one side instead of a retainer. Doesn't need an extra tool. You can do it with your fingers. Wedging's a normal part of this. You know, Paladin advocate using their wedges with it, of course. And it has a slight curved server clean only more like the contour of a sectional. So again, a little bit of a hybrid. I actually found them really effective for simple class two, simple MODs, but even more complex class twos and MODs core build-ups and again easily for when you're using when there's a tooth with no neighbor price wise we've got them coming in at around 48 pound 22 for 48 so again roughly a pound per use but you will need to use one or more paladin wedges at 50p each making total price per use anywhere between one pound and two pound the pros are Mm -hmm. it's ready to go right so no setup again saves time it's a hybrid between contoured sectional and circumferential meaning marginal ridges are easier to shape and simple class two the adaptation was really nice and then even on a more complex setup, like an MOD where the cusps were undermined, once uh, there was gapping with the matrix similar to the uh, Pro Matrix curve, in fact, it looks very similar to that photo, but once the Paladin wedges, these specialized wedges were in, not only did it seal the base really quite effectively, I f- it looks to me that it's flared the coronal portion of the matrix outwards as well towards mm-hmm. the adjacent marginal ridges. So, mm-hmm. and, and if there was a little bit of gapping, I reckon, the technique that you outlined before of just holding the matrix across, securing it with a little bit of composite and then curing with the, it. With a probe. Yeah, and yeah exactly. Yeah. Or even a, a small ball burnish or anything, right? That will just hold it nice and tight. And in mm-hmm. fact, doing that, you could actually hold it where the anatomical contact area would actually be, which would be the ideal way to approach that rather than a probe in, in my mind, right? And then cure that. And then I think you get mm-hmm. a really, really good result with it. So I think this is actually this is actually quite quite cool, right? This is so cool. out of the one you've shown me so far, this this does look like the best in terms of the same cavities that you've shown us. This one so far looks like like pretty decent, but you have to use these specialized wedges mm-hmm. to get that result. So the price suddenly escalates a lot with these uh, plastic wedges. Exactly, exactly. For for a simple class two, I think you probably maybe get away with not using a wedge, but in this situation, right, you, you're certainly yeah. going to need to. So, but of course, 
there are no free rides, right? There's always a, there's always downsides to every mm-hmm. every system, right? So the matrix itself. I mean, I just want to mention two two things. One is, uh, I, you know, for even for a simple, uh, my my tendency is to use a wedge, even though because you might get a seal, just to get a little bit of separation to, to guarantee that you're going to get that contact, basically. And that, that's one thing. Uh, so I want to see what you feel about that with with this system like this. But two, have you got like a? I think you've made one. A summary of of all these fees per matrix, a little table that we can download. I've got a fantastic infographic ready for you guys. Come on, Jazz. You have to. Uh, my oh, grandmother amazing. taught me oh when I God. go to someone's house, you take them something, right? <laughs> okay, this is going to be really popular. I'm going to send it out to everyone by email. So if you haven't subscribed to my emails, now is a good time because you want to see Sonny's, especially if you're an associate and you want to present some data to your principals. Principals love data. Like when you're making a decision to to buy new equipment or change equipment at that dentist meeting, imagine you got Sonny's infographics like... We're paying up to two pound a restoration here compared to I could be doing this. So I think uh, this this download is gonna be very popular. I can I can I can envisage it now. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. So back to the cons of this, right? Because again, is there you know everything has a has a downside. The matrix itself, you know, one of the reasons I think it adapts so well is because it's thin. But again, the problem being that when it was really thin in the mouth, I found that if I had a simple class two, but the contacts were not flared buccolingually like you know the preparation was very minimal sometimes it's actually difficult to actually get the paladin 360 in like it just started to crinkle and this it basically started to crinkle right and then i couldn't see it and then i'd have to throw that away like, um, it becomes concave it ruins the contact area actually uh yeah. ruins, uh, deforms uh, you, the it would make like a ledge in your comp yeah, actually, actually, yes, yeah deform, deforms deforms it. so i'd have to then take it out and then use a new one so then that's another cost right so if you keep doing that two or three times you can add the, the cost add up in that regard as well but it can be frustrating. So then, you know, somebody will say to you, well, why don't you just flare the, flare the margins outwards, which you can do. And again, that would be the solution. But just a note that it was quite fiddly whenever the contacts were quite tight, right? Even sometimes with wedging. On top of that, mm. anything subgingival became quite difficult because it's so thin, right? So you're trying to see it lower down. Again, it would just start deforming and crinkling. And then even with the wedge, you can see the irregularity at the base of the cavity. So that made it a bit of a problem in my mind, right? But other than that, I thought mm-hmm. it was pretty good. And then I just mentioned, like, I'm not very tall at all. I'm not a big guy. But I found it really tedious to tighten the knob in the mouth, especially with, you know, molars, right? To actually get my fingers in and tighten this really small knob. If you can see from the pictures, you know, it's smaller than the size of a tooth. It's almost smaller. Th- it is smaller than a premolar. You know, it's it, almost... It's, it's finger tightened? It's finger tightened, yeah. Okay. So it doesn't, No fancy no tool. No fancy tool, exactly. Which is, again, a pro and a con, right? But, yeah, I'm just thinking somebody with bigger hands than me is going to, if I found it quite tough that's going to be quite quite tricky right could you use like a, a curved mosquitoes to grip onto it and tighten but i mean that's so annoying to have to do that i mean a midway i can just imagine yeah yeah, yeah exactly but you know we want solutions that make life easier not not add complexity right so yeah, yeah that, there's yeah, that just that yeah, element right and if you're very dainty and you've got very little tiny fingers maybe it will work very well for you but it's just something worth pointing out to people before they go run out and purchase this and you know the actual when you buy these kits they're not cheap you know these starter kits for for these types of systems they're very very expensive so uh, but we'll come back to that uh, mm-hmm. after. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd say, again, once more for the environmentally minded, again, you're going to throw away the metal plus the plastic element as well. Um, and then, you know, some people have asked me, they say, well, what do you think about the auto matrix? Don't you think that's a better option then? Problem is, even with molars, you're trying to now get this tool in the mouth and locate, just like you were suggesting with the mosquito full set, you know, that can be quite tedious to try and reach back, get it in, then tighten it in the mouth and then do the same thing when you want to release it, right? So actually not having an arm or a retainer here, I actually think, goes against it so to summarize i think if you're doing anything like six five four you know forward it is pretty pretty good but sevens and eights maybe it gets a bit tedious got it got it yeah just to the ergonomics of reaching uh, makes sense exactly exactly because exactly. everything looks great on the video right <laughs> so then right all right now is it time for your truck not yet one more little bonus right a little bonus so not strictly a circumferential but um you know we've all used mylars which are just straight clear celluloid strips for anterior teeth and then we stick a wedge in and then we hope that it'll be all right. I've got a little bit of a meme for you, all right? So always, always, uh-uh. always, always, okay. a, always so a, you're a playing with one. Yeah, it's a risky one, right? It's a risky one to use a straight uh-uh. uh, mylar to, to restore class three or four. If it's simple, you probably get away with it. But whenever it's anything more extensive or gets near the, uh, or actually following the contour of the, you know, incise and marginal ridge, then it becomes a bit of a problem, right? So this leads on to our logical mm-hmm. next contender, which is the Garrison Very Strip, which is a blue mylar strip with preformed cervical and coronal contour. Uh, it works best with rubber dam and wedge uh, as it's a flexible strip and it cannot really isolate a prep near the ginger, right? And, it, and it's, it's flexible. It's not a, a very mm-hmm. rigid. So what I found is that it works really well for simple class threes, simple class fours, and really quite effective for addressing anterior black triangles. And that's actually how I used to do it. 
and and I have actually seen dentists online use it for simple class two and MODs, but I just never was able to do that. It, it just seemed really, really awkward for me, but maybe other people can make it work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In terms of price. I mean, yeah. the, the what I've found, uh, Sunny, is I agree that this curve, and we and we get it, and I, and I love it, the various strips are really good. The contour you get is superior in my hands, and I like the way it wedges. But when I've used it for the mylar pull technique for composite veneers, that's for me, it was a big no-no because when I did it once, because of that contour, as I pull it through, it actually uh, opens up the embrasure too wide. So that incisal embrasure becomes too wide. So for my composite veneer kind of work, I actually like to put the straight mylar, the clear straight mylar, and then just pull it straight. That makes sure that I don't get too wide of an embrasure. So that's in my experience. Generally, class three is good, but for composite veneers and the mylar pull technique, in my hands, this doesn't work. I, I don't know what you, what, you, what you want to comment on. No, no, that makes a lot of sense to me. Actually, I've got a really unpopular opinion here. Uh, I'm not a fan of the mylar pull technique at all. So uh, I don't I do not do that at mm -hmm, all. Mm -hmm. so, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. So, well, how do you do well, it? So, so how do you manage well, your composite veneers adjacent When to? we pull out the trump card, I will be revealing all. <laughs> 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 is there anything this can't this magic can't do okay we'll figure it well, out well um well it's like um it it turned me from zero to hero right so if it can do that for me i reckon it can do, do it for everybody because i don't think i was the best raw material to start with but anyways so the price of the very strips are 120 pounds for a pack of 100 so that comes in at one pound 20 per use and if you're going to use wooden wow. wedges of course there's no real cost to you but if you're going to use a specialist wedge for whatever reason then of course that could be anywhere up to £2.20, right? So £1.20 is £2.20. So it is good, but uh, let's talk about the pros of it, right? So it's ready to go, there's no setup, you know, you'd have to set up with a retainer. It's better suited than a straight mylar due to the built-in curve. And you can like cure through the matrix, right? So some people really enjoy doing that, you can do that. And the cons I would say would be that it's a specific tool for a specific job. And unless you can pull it off for of posterior cavities, then it's not that versatile, right? You're only gonna be pulling it out for these particular instances. I found it not to be rigid enough for subgingival class three or four, you know, so anything simple, it can certainly mm -hmm. handle, but anytime it's subgingival, uh, you know, it becomes problematic when you've got a rubber dam and a wedge. And I actually found that it'll just distort it, will just kink it, you know, and then that's, you're not, that's not achieving what you're mm -hmm. trying to achieve. And again, it's quite tedious because you need two hands and I'm not really a big fan of having to secure something with one hand and then work with the other. So you kind of want to wrap oh, around. Yes, the old make sure, make sure I can't move my finger now. So make sure you cure around me because I can't, I can't move my finger. Exactly, exactly <laughs> that. Exactly that. Right. Exactly that. So, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it does, it does its job. It does its job. But like I say, for, for black triangles, it really mm -hmm. used to get me out of a difficult spot. Got it. So is this where you reveal the question mark now? Yeah, indeed. It's time for the wild card, right? But just to really uh, build it up a little bit with a bit of theatrics, can you imagine a single matrix system that can handle any direct restorative situation and that the most common matrix that you'll use comes in lower price than all of the options we've showcased today except the squeebland and straight band option and i firmly believe this system provides more value to dentists for what you receive compared to other starter kits on the market by far and learning how to properly use it was crucial in my move from the nhs into fully private dentistry and it feels good results are beautiful and can lower our daily stress and frustrations Sounds too good to be true. It, it, it did until then when I learned about it and my good my good buddy Mahmoud, me and Mahmoud are doing the occlusion course together and he raves on about uh, th these bands. Uh, I know in America it's quite big already. Uh, and so when I uh, have used it, it's really gotten me out of, of some really big messes. And so I'm, I've am i already been converted. One of the reasons of bringing you on is to talk about all the matrices. And so I, I really appreciate you doing that. But I know you're a huge advocate and educator of this type of band. So please go ahead. The big reveal. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Presenting the greater curve. <laughs> matrix system all right so the greater curve hashtag gc yes indeed indeed yeah hashtag gc so yeah uh, the uh, greater curve was formed in 2006 and it actually interestingly owns the patents to all of its designs and it's made in america as well so it's actually manufactured there so really big USA. yeah indeed USA. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> i don't think they manufacture that much but what they do manufacture certainly is pretty pretty good quality right and this certainly screams quality, everything about it is quality, right? Which is really quite cool. So let's go into it a little bit, right? So the system consists of a customized Toffelmeyer retainer and a series of, like I said, nine patented curved bands. It does need setting up, but again, it's easier than Squeveland. And the Greater Curve Toffelmeyer has a soft-sided fork designed for use for the Greater Curve bands. So we can achieve that adequate tightening that we need without risk of tearing them, you know? So that pain point's gone, which is really cool. The contra angle head 
means we so i mean i i, I don't get you so so i see two bands two retainers on the left yeah, side yeah, right yeah. so I, are you trying to say that the greater curve is only compatible with a greater curve retainer no, 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 no. top of my retainer it work with both but i'm just saying that the greater curve uh, top of my retainer is just far better and these are the benefits of it got it got it yeah so the the greater curve top of my retainer has a soft-sided fork which is different from the regular ones that you get uh, meaning we can really really tighten the bands and get the tightening that we need without risk of tearing the bands the uh, contra angle head means that we can reach any tooth and any surface. So distal upper sevens, wisdoms, anteriors are all not a problem for us. Uh, it has a widened groove for easier band placement. And so the generic ones, they have a really small insertion groove. So that can be quite tedious. Mm -hmm. And again, just quality is just the, the quality is crazy. I've been using mine since 2018 and they're working really well, just like they've got them. And I actually asked Dr. Brown, mm -hmm. the inventor of the system, I said, you know, Dr. Brown, I said to I call him Denny. I said, Denny, when did you change? your retainers and he said he never had you know so there's something to be said that was really refreshing because i had replaced so many of those regular ones that you know once i got these it was, it was pretty pretty nice to know that you're not going to have to constantly be spending over and over mm. i mean the, the information i get on them and you're suggesting that yeah these bands can be used with your normal top of my retainer but if you wanted the best and you just wanted to get one and uh, reap the benefits of it then it would be the the greater curve branded top of my retainer uh, but the thing that and I'm being very real with you uh, Sonny is the thing that's almost putting me off now is I'm seeing a huge choice you almost get choice fatigue oh, I love it. with the you know the nine different yeah, ones is there the Pareto band is there one that you know in 80% of time I'm using uh, this one please tell me there is yeah that's that's correct right so I'm, I'm gonna touch on this now right so of those nine bands I use four you know so I just use four and I okay. can do everything right I just use four and uh, you know so we've had to also develop the range for dentists requests over the years right so they come in just to touch on it and then I'll give you a bit of an explanation as to why you won't need all of the nine and the flexibility that we have as well so they come in three designs right so standard wide and new band. But, but can we just change the order of this Sonny oh. do you mind jumping to the bit where you have it on the cavity yeah okay okay so just the primer right so the system comes with a customized greater curve top of my retainer and you have a choice of nine bands. It doesn't need to be used with any expensive rings, springs or wedges. And shockingly, it works with or without rubber dam and you can still achieve isolation at the cervical margin. And it works really well for class two, three, four, five, direct composite veneer, direct composite crown or onlay. And we can address extensive subgingival caries, perform DME, close anterior black triangles, diastema, wide interposable spaces, allow for restoration of multiple surfaces in one step basically any direct restorative situation you can think of so in terms mm -hmm. of the price the stainless steel standard band which is the workhorse and is the one that's going to be used for the majority of your situations is 75.99 for 100 so that comes in at 76p mm -hmm. per use the uh, micro thin range which we'll go into later comes in at one pound 20 and then the special brass range range comes in at one pound 60. but like i said majority of the time you'll just use a stainless steel standard band which is 76p and we don't need to use anything more than a wooden wedge with it. And we actually don't use the wedge to apply force and separate the teeth. We actually restore teeth in a neutral position. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is cheaper than all the others except the squeevelin that you exactly, mentioned. So exactly. that's good and it's all metal. Exactly, exactly that, right? And so the um, pros, it's effective for simple to complex restorations and for beginner to advanced clinicians. It's quick and easy compared to set up compared to a squeevelin. It provides enhanced isolation when using alongside rubber dam but also by itself in those extreme cases where rubber dam, clamp, ring and wedges would prevent access and full seating of your usual matrix. So those really, really sub mm -hmm. situations, it's really hard to use those conventional setups, but Greater Curve allows us yep. in tandem with say something like a split dam to get isolation and still do the work we need to do. I, I just want to uh, contribute here because from my experience, you know, I start off the rubber dam, I remove the old uh, amalgam under rubber dam, obviously, because uh, that's just my part of my protocol, mm -hmm. my nurse is trained that way. And then when you get to the really subgingival part, the interproximal piece of rubber dam, it's too coronal. It can't get down the two, three millimeters, right? So at that point, you get the scissors out, you, you snip it, uh, and essentially you convert it into kind of like a split dam. But then when I use the greater curve, honestly, I've got, I've got photos of this, like the how... I was able to get isolation from the matrix band to, to get no bleeding, no saliva was pretty impressive. And then what you told me, that was because the way that it tightens, it tightens at the cervical. Like the more you tighten, the, the, the stronger the grip, the seal you get at the apical. And, and that for me was a game changer. When I saw how dry it was, like the lack of drops uh, when I took a photo, that was really cool. And I shared that photo with you very first when I started using it some months ago. Yeah, yeah, indeed. No, it's, it's seeing is believing, right? It's, it's one of those things that you can't unsee. You can't unsee. And just touching on that, because of what you've just mentioned, you know, we have a very, very low overhang risk. 
you know, which is fantastic for our patients, right? Yes, it's good for us to have these easy ways of working. That's really cool. But, you know, overhangs, voids. and open But by voids. overhang, I mean, you're, you're talking about amalgam or you mean like composite yeah, as well? well obviously, obviously, you can I mean, get overhangs yeah, and composite, but like, so this is suitable for amalgam as well. Correct, that's, that's why, that's why, that's why. And just, you know, just stressing that part as well, that again, we can, we can, you know, really do procedures that are nice and easy and smooth for us, but it's fantastic for the patient in that there's no overhang risk you know, we don't typically get voids and we don't typically get open contacts, you know. So for the patient, there's that, you know, that whole three pronged way that they can have their teeth, you know, iatrogenically damaged in a sense. We don't have to worry about that. So we can serve them to the best of our abilities, at least in my hands. That's how it works. OK, cool. So, I mean, I, the, the photo speaks themselves. The contact just looks, it is flared out. You can see that the band is actually uh, contacting the adjacent teeth. The thing that sits uneasy with me still to this day, Sonny, is I'm so used to using a wedge. It feels alien not using a wedge. But the few times I've done it, fine, I get it. I can see why, because the apical seal is so damn good. And then the other thing that we're going we're gonna to touch on is that really was like, what the hell? I can't believe you do this, is that you the, the burnishing technique is like you get a burr. Uh, and I saw this on YouTube, is that you, you drill away the metal matrix until you see the adjacent tooth. And then that's how you restore. I mean, I know you say that there's an alternative way of super burnishing, which you didn't come to. But that for me, as someone new to using the system, for me, that was like a, whoa, this is different. This is super different. Well, it certainly is. Right? I, I think a lot about the kind of greater curve restorative framework is a bit alien to most, right? Because how many people use circumferentials for every class of cavity? You know, not many aside from weirdos like me, right? Uh, but yeah, of course. And that's, that's a bit of an alien technique too, to really define, see what we're advocating is that we set the contact areas where they go anatomically, right? So just below the marginal ridge, you know, in the upper third of that crown, and typically there'll be anywhere from sort of one mil by one mil or two mil by two mil. We burnish that area. And traditionally, in the greater curve methodology, you would take a um, fine rugby burr and you would just gently burnish side to side, side to side until you just finally expose some, uh, expose some to. So that final layer of matrix has been removed. And then we restore in that position, negating the need for the wedge to actually separate the teeth, right? And so we have a specific technique. Which is clever, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. clever, but just very alien. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. And again, it's, it's not going to be for everybody, right? But again, just to cater for those people who it was really alien for, so we've had delegates that have learned from us, we also propose a technique called super burnishing, which works really well with the brass because the brass is so soft, whereby we do the same thing. We kind of uh, set where the contact area should go. And then we use a rose head to just gently burnish side to side, side to side, to really thin that matrix out. So from a 38 micron sheet of metal, you know, who knows how thin that gets to. But, you know, if it's something like 10, 10 microns, I think you've got a fairly decent solid contact there as well in that in that situation. Mm -hmm. So something for everyone. And just because you ha might have this data, I just forgot to ask you earlier, like something like a pro matrix straight band. Do you know how many microns that is? It's thicker. It's around 50. they around 50, those guys. OK, OK. So we're talking decent numbers here, which is good. So it's not like 90, 100 no, microns, no, anything like that. Massive. But OK, so but so this is 38, yeah, the, the standard great curve. Yeah, yeah. So, so, okay, cool. so this, the, um, the stainless steel range and the brass range are 38 micron. And then the micro thin mm -hmm. comes in at 25 micron, right? Um, actually, just to touch mm -hmm. on that, because we've gone there, the micro thin was actually made in response for dentists who wanted a thin matrix band to use conventionally, you know, to actually wedge and part the teeth. And then they use their micro thin and they do their procedure as they normally would with wedging and they get very good results as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so because the Got matrix it. is quite thin, they can actually still burnish against where they'd like it to be because it's, it's quite thin, right? And what, what if I must use a wedge with a standard? Do, do you think that almost reduces the efficacy of it? Yeah, certainly, certainly. Again, you know, the reason that this technique was even born, you know, Dr. Brown came up with this, was the variability in results. You know, we've all had it where we've done restorations, followed our protocols, and yet the contact was light. You know, or we do an MOD and one side was light and one side was heavy. So by this framework, we avoid that. We don't have that at all. We don't we, we get happy, snappy contacts every time. That technique gives us such predictability. It's, it's crazy. Got it. Cool. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that. As we move to the final phase of this podcast, just give us those nuances because now you've probably piqued everyone's interest about greater curve. Give us about those indications because you said you use it for everything, which is really clever. Just tell us, the, the, you know, what makes it so versatile? Uh, and so the greater curve can also span wide interproximal spaces and still achieve an anatomical contact area. It can be used anteriorly, posteriorly, and for class five, whether they're buccal or lingual or palatal. And it can be used for any situation, right? I'll also say that it doesn't require wedging and there's no need to stuff retraction cord or PTFE tape into thin friable gingiva when restoring class fives. We can actually retract the gingiva as well. And it's one complete system uh, which makes stock keeping really, really easy and simple, you know, for your for your mm -hmm. practice management and your your assistants. 
inventory is so easy to manage. And the fantastic part about it also is you don't need to order starter kits over and over. Once you've played with the range of bands and find out which ones that you like to use, you can just reorder the actual band that you'd like to reorder and additional top wires as well. Mm, got it, which is the, the mostly mostly the standard one, as you exactly, said. Exactly, exactly, in the majority of the cases. And when it comes to the, the downsides, right, because again, everything's got downsides, due to the coronal flare, which is fantastic for, for reaching and for setting contact areas, but due to that coronal flare, it also means that we require more finishing and sculpting of your composite along the buckle, lingual, and palatal. But for me, that's mm -hmm. not much of a big deal, right? So long as the bases of my cavities are nice and sealed and they're overhang and void free, I'm more than happy to adjust the buckle and lingual aspects after. You know, it's, it's a small price to pay. It's kind of like bioclear method, right? You get that really good seal, apically, but then when you see the photos online doing bioclear posterior, there's a whole lot of composite buckle and palatal, uh, and then that's quite quick to just sort of polish off. So it's kind of applying this, the same concepts, uh, but then my question to you is why not just use bioclear? Well, so then, you know, I'm sure bioclear is a really fantastic system, but again, it doesn't have the versatility that we have. You can use a few bands and restore all situations, right? So in essence, we can just learn this framework that in principle is the same methodology over and over. So you don't need to know five or six or 10 different techniques for every different situation. Slight nuances, yes, but by and large, this works in much the same way, tighten cervically, flares coronally, whether that be anterior, posterior, or class five. I guess a good thing there is that, you know, with, with Bioclear, you need the different curves, different sizes mm -hmm. for different posterior cavities, and that's a lot of stocking. Whereas with this, with the standard, you're suggesting that, yeah, you could do the class one, two, three, four, five, and the whole lot of them with the one system. So there we are, you got a photo there showing the, the other classes as well. Totally, cool. totally, totally. And then just to just to illustrate, as well, I'm sorry, we're still on the cons. So that was that. The system and technique also requires us to round off marginal ridges when finishing also, meaning the dentist can sculpt in those contours but again, that may not be for everybody, right? That may not be for everybody. Some people really prefer injection molding type techniques. And I'd say the final con is there is a learning curve, mind the pun, because most people are not accustomed, like we mentioned, to use a circumferential for anything more than posterior class two MOD. And again, the major distinction being that we're restoring teeth in a neutral position, and we're not needing to apply forces via wedges and springs and rings, so that obviously there is a bit of a learning curve, but most people can learn that in a single day with us. Brilliant. I mean, uh, this is exactly what, what I need because I've sent you some videos of me using it now and, and a few times uh, you've, you've been able to coach me and mentor me in terms of uh, where I went wrong. So the problem with me is we're trying to figure out when I'm going to come to your course, but every Saturday you suggest um, I've always got plans I'm teaching or I'm working or whatever. So we're going to align one day and I'm going to uh, <laughs> start using the more complex sort of uh, nuances of this technique. Totally, totally, totally. I look forward to seeing you. Sweet. Here are some examples of class twos and broken cusps. Uh, and the fantastic thing that I found with the, the Gregor curve is doing back-to-back -back class twos has become like one of my most profitable procedures. You know, it's a very efficient way of doing it and it's very reproducible. And I'm rarely having to ever redo anything, you know, because there was a light or open contact. And I often found that traditionally with MODs, I'd always have one that was light, one that was heavy. That, that frustration is completely gone. And then when we have really difficult to reach teeth, lower distals, you know, lingual aspects and stuff, this can really help us access those places and help isolate as well. Then we have class threes, even if they're subject. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're doing back to back, do you have to do one at a time? Yeah, it is one at a time. Exactly, exactly. But it actually works out quicker. Mm -hmm. It actually works out quicker in, 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 in my hands. So then we can have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, class threes. It works very well for that. But even if it's subgingival, that's, that's pretty mm -hmm. impressive. And class four, even when they're really extensive, you know, they can be below the gum as well. We can get that nice seal and we can restore them predictably. Uh, class fives. I'm just trying to envisage how the band would fit for a class four. Uh, have you got a photo yeah, of what the band setup looks I like do. with a class well, four? Well, I, 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 I really I, I, see. Because I mean, like, if you if you all imagine a large class four, then how does the band actually sit? How do you get that playful contour? I'm a little bit intrigued. I will show you that right now. Where is my image? There it is on the left. So it wraps around, and what we do is we just cut some access. Ah, uh, yes. You know, so you can imagine that's a very difficult situation to restore otherwise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. So it's like a, it, it kind of is like over molding it and then getting your rubby ball at the end, getting the right contours. You're sort of, you know, there's two types of people there. You're either a printer or you're a, you're a miller. So you're milling away the excess composite here to get the right shape. Yeah, totally. I think we're a bit of a hybrid, but yeah, certainly, certainly correct. And then there's lots of benefits to doing that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, overbuilding composite and then cutting it back means you get this pristine layer of composite underneath. And it typically is, you know, free of any surface contaminants. You know, some people roll composite in their fingers and you can get this surface layer of stuff in there. And by cutting that away, we get this oxygen inhibition layer 
free composite you know it seems to give us a, a really nice aesthetic finish as well doing it that way mm -hmm. and you also got an image here for those watching if you go back to that last slide of actually making the contact by burnishing with a burr and that's what we we're referring to just so, so you can show that again just that uh, same image that you had before there we are that premolar down there and then the other was you know class fives instead of trying to put something into the gingival sulcus what you can use the greater curve to do is actually meet the gingiva in the sulcus and it will tighten around there so it's almost like it retracts the tissue without without having to push something deep into the sulcus seals it off and again allows you to place mm -hmm. your restoration so it's quite handy and then you know composite often gets a really bad rap you know a lot of dentists don't like composite bonding anteriorly they think it's it's uh, you know short-lived it's not gonna be great but actually it's my preferred way of doing composite veneers now because what it allows me to do is have a matrix a solid matrix to pack against you know, and that's a, a really big advantage, you know, when you've got something to pack against, so it's void free. You know, often gingival curricular fluid can interfere with our bond, especially around the gingival margin, and then it can come back in sometimes very mm -hmm. short periods looking not so great. And this enables us to just bypass those problems and actually have nice, long lasting composite. And again, we can use it for direct composite on nice. and crowns as well, you know, so it's a very versatile system. We actually, I'm big on finishing, you know, so we actually share occlusal stamping for a whole quadrant, you know, so to reduce our finishing times. And uh, as, as I read on some of your work, that actually older patients do not tolerate, you know, younger morphology very well. So in, in much of the time, I copy what they have and we, we share how to do that to speed up yes. our finishing time. Yes, yes, yes. The rule of occlusion. And, and for all of those dentists posting beautiful restoration on Instagram and stuff, uh, until I see a red dot on there, I don't trust it. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. And just, you know, touch on this as well. This is These are the the anatomical contact areas produced by the greater curve technique. So those contact areas have width as well as depth, right? So, you know, that's actually what mm -hmm. we see in nature, but we're just replicating that as well. Amazing. Sonny, you've given us a good overview of the different matrix systems to show us the greater curve, which was the trump card. And, you know, from my experience, I'd like to apply it to all these other scenarios as well. But certainly I've been doing it for the really large subgingival reconstructions. And again, that word reconstructions. And it's been brilliant in my hands uh, uh, for those reconstructions so far. I'm still in a bit of a learning curve. That's why I'm reaching uh, out to you for mentorship and guidance. So it's great to have that. And, I, and thank you so much for, for doing that. How can we reach out more to you? How can we learn more about this? Because I, I believe you're the distributor for this. Uh, and also you run the courses. What is is the place to go to. There we are. www.draycomposite.com. Still Dre. Still Composite. <laughs> still Matrixing. That's right. Still Circumferential. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make a music video. Man. Oh man, we got. We, we should. That would be hilarious, now. <laughs> okay, we got to do this. It's gonna happen. That's now. It. I, I... <laughs> I've got to do it. Amazing. Now, please, please tell us, though, um, obviously, I've, I've said the website, but if there any other message you want to leave to producer RT, the mic is yours. You know, you just, uh, just like me, you know, I was really struggling once upon a time. And just by having an open mind, you know, and being coachable, I was able to turn my career around. You know, I actually thought I was going to leave dentistry at one point crazily. You know, I really, I really thought I was. If anyone's seen my story, you can actually watch a video of ours coming out, right, and actually tell you how I made a lot of money in 2017 trading bitcoin and then i lost it all in 2018 and had to go back to dentistry but lucky that happened because that's when i found greater curve and that's when i began my mentorship with dr brown and the rest is history and now we're sharing my secret weapon with the world Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing it uh, with our little world, the producer RT. Guys, I hope you found that valuable. We're going to make sure we get the download out to you. If you're on the emails, a link in there as well in the intro. I'll tell you where to go to get that very kindly prepared infographic from, from Sunny. Sunny, thanks so much for giving me your time. Really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, thanks for having me, Jazz. Appreciate it.